So there's been kind of a shocking development in the North Carolina-Minnesota game, which, for those who are not aware, is the only Power 4 matchup happening today, that being Thursday, of course, as in it's the only matchup between a couple of Power 4 teams, hence why I am so intrigued by it, because these are two programs I don't have big expectations for, but I don't have the lowest expectations for. I could see one of these teams bottoming out. I could see one of them rising closer to the top of the conference than we'd expect. I could see both of them staying smack dab in the middle. They're kind of mystery teams. They're not chaos teams like UCF and Iowa State and Big 12, for instance, but they're definitely mystery teams at at some level for a couple of reasons. And the shocking development that I alluded to is that the betting line moved by four points. Four, not one, not two, which is how many titles the Heatles won, not three, not four. Oh, wait, yeah, no, four. They, 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 you just don't see that sort of movement. That's a dramatic shift. So it was Minnesota minus two and a half, according to our friends at FanDuel, and now it is Minnesota plus one and a half. That gives me pause. That gives me pause. I'm sticking with the Golden Gophers here because they're at home. This should be a really fun, competitive football game for anyone who just wants a college football game to throw on that's going to be fun, competitive, get the juices flowing, serve as a secondary teaser for this upcoming Saturday when you have a great lineup with Florida, Miami, Texas A&M, Notre Dame, and Clemson, Georgia on the docket. This is a great game for that. So last year when these teams met in Chapel Hill, it was a North Carolina win, 31-13. to Last year was actually Minnesota's first losing season since 2017 that's part of the reason i have faith in the gophers ability to get off to a strong start here though mac brown coached north carolina teams historically have started strong and if they win this game they prove me wrong because i'm picking minnesota to win and if they win more than seven games they'd prove me wrong again because that's how many i think north carolina are winning this year i'm very down on the tar heels i think they honestly Their schedule is pretty favorable, so it it might be hard to do this because they do have some really good players. Marion Hampton is a really, really good running back, and they're going to lean on him a lot this year. I could see them missing a bowl game. I could. I could. It's not the least likely thing in the world. But when they took on Minnesota last year, the difference came at the quarterback position, which I'll get to later in the game. 31-13 to was the final. Drake May went for, drumroll please, 414 yards. I'm going to make the most solid, accurate, specific, cannot miss prediction in this game as far as stats and numbers go. There will not be a 400-yard passer in this game. Both teams are undergoing changes at the quarterback position from a season ago. That is a bad thing for North Carolina, and that is a great thing for Minnesota. Because last year, the Golden Gophers, let's just say they didn't throw the football very well. They still ended up 6-7 and seven by the time they won their bowl game because they got in at 5-7. and seven. That happens every now and then. Minnesota did it last year, 6-7 and seven year. Can they build on that? Yeah, they have a decent core returners on both sides of the ball headlined by the running back Darius Taylor, who might not play in this game. He might play in this game. That's a big factor because you've got Amari and Hampton on the other side. North Carolina is going to come out and run the ball. Now, Minnesota kept him in check in the matchup last year, held him to under 50 yards rushing, but that's because Drake May was going crazy. So they didn't need Amari and Hampton to have the sort of day that he's capable of, a one to 200 yard effort. And Minnesota's rush defense overall last season really, really struggled. So, I think that for Minnesota in this game, if they can contain Omari and Hampton, that plays to their benefit. The same exact equation goes for North Carolina. If you get Darius Taylor playing in this game, then guess what? You got to keep him under control. He averaged almost six yards a carry last year en route to an 800-yard rushing season. He could burst onto the scene this year and have a 12, 1300 yard campaign because you know, Minnesota with their running backs yet, they like to row the boat and run the football. So interested to see if he plays, he went for 138 yards in this matchup last year. If he's not there, that gives me less confidence in in, in Minnesota. But if he is there, they bring in Max Brosmer, the transfer from New Hampshire at quarterback. And there is always a question when you're coming from an FCS program to an FBS, particularly a power four league, and you are playing the quarterback position, there is always a fair question to be asked. How are you going to adjust? How are you going to adapt? 
plays are going to happen faster. Guys are bigger. Schemes might be more complex. There's a lot of great coaching at, at the FCS level. I know that as well as anybody, but certainly there is an adjustment and game one, not ideal. I'd feel a lot better about Minnesota in this game if they themselves had an FCS opponent week one and it was North Carolina week two. I'd feel supremely confident in Minnesota. Instead, I'm only slightly confident. From a betting line standpoint, if you're looking at placing a wager on this game, I'd stay away. I, I, I would stay so, so far away from this game. I want no part of Minnesota plus one and a half. No part of it. Or North Carolina minus one and a half. I don't want it. Would would not recommend it. A four point swing. That's just mm, that's that's stay away. That is that is stay away territory. So the question in this game is going to come down to that quarterback position because Brosmer comes in on one side after an experienced and successful career at the FCS level. He's been at New Hampshire for the last few years, over eight thousand yards in his time passing there. He's been quite good. Last year in this game, Minnesota's starting quarterback went for. 133 yards and an interception. What if I told you those were not the worst parts of his stat line? It wasn't good. It wasn't good. 11 for 29 passing. 11. I challenge you. I have seen games such as Georgia Tech, Florida State, where a team leans on a run game and doesn't have to throw the ball very often. Give me a game in, where, in which a quarterback is 11 for 29 under 150 yards and interception, no touchdowns, and the team won the game. That's pretty hard. That's pretty hard. So a lot of this falls on Max Brosmer. On the other side, you could be going up against Max Johnson. I think he's going to be a starter. I'm not the biggest Max Johnson fan in the world. But is he capable? Sure. He's he's fine. But is he Drake May? Is he Sam Howell? No, he's not, which is why I'm down on North Carolina this year. I mean, in this matchup a year ago, they leaned on Drake May, 414 yards passing. He had a couple interceptions as well, but I think P.J. Fleck at home is going to have enough to get it done. It's it's going to come down, though, to who gets more out of their quarterback position, whatever that looks like on both sides, because you have a couple of dynamic running backs. Darius Taylor, hopefully he's able to go, and it'll be a great matchup of high-end running backs. If you have that, I expect both ground games to be able to succeed. But what do you get out of the quarterback position? How do you complement that? How do you build off that run game? I don't know. I don't know. That's what I'm most excited to see uh, in, in this particular matchup. But also to see if there are any indicators from either of these teams that that they're, they're going to show some life, that they're going to have some juice, that they're going to be a team worth watching. The ACC is a much more gettable league than the Big Ten is this year. But P.J. Fleck could be coaching to keep himself off of the hot seat. You string together two losing seasons in a row after showcasing what you are capable of as a head coach, which is getting Minnesota into a top 15, 20 range throughout the season. And by the time the season comes to a close, you put up a second straight losing season, hot seat talk comes around. You put up a losing season if you're Mac Brown, 72 years old, hot seat talk will come around. The loser of this game, coach doesn't go on the hot seat, but it could start a trend towards moving in that direction where you have to think about as a, as a university, okay, what does our head coach bring to the table? Do we see upward momentum? And whoever wins this game is going to have a step in that direction. Whoever loses it has a step in the other direction, of course. Will it define their seasons? I don't think so. I don't think so. This is the highest stakes game in all of college football. Does that make it uninteresting? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I've got Minnesota winning the game at home. I think first to 30 wins, just like last year. 30 to 24, Gophers over North Carolina. I will feel especially strong if Darius Taylor plays and if Max Brosmer is able to come out, connect with his receiving core, and prove himself capable of playing at the power four level. I think it's one thing when you're – a Cam Ward, for instance, who went from Incarnate Word to Washington State. He's at Miami now and could be a Heisman Trophy contender this year. His first year at Washington State, there was an adjustment period. There was, an, there was a big adjustment period because he hadn't played as much football. But you look at a guy like Max Brosmer, he's played a lot of football. That feels a little bit more 
like an FCS transfer who you have seen a lot of who, who makes that adjustment quicker, but it remains to be seen. That, that's probably the singularly most important question. And I'm putting my prediction hopes here on the shoulders of a guy who has yet to take a snap at the power four level. That's true. On the flip side, though, I know what Max Johnson is at quarterback, and they might have a, a little bit more of a battle there. But regardless, I, I've seen Max Johnson play. It's not that inspiring. It's not that impressive. He looks like a left-handed Phillip Rivers, and he's he's okay. He's fine. Brosmer could be better. Brosmer could be worse. I know what the floor and the ceiling is. I know exactly what Max Johnson is as a quarterback. I don't know what Max Brosmer is right now. So fascinating to see how this game plays out. I've got the Gophers 30-24. But quite frankly, folks, with that betting line movement, Vegas might know something. I might. This is one I could look back later and say, I was so foolish. Why did I doubt Vegas? They moved that line for a reason. It was Minnesota minus two and a half. Now it's North Carolina minus one and a half. They've got to have a reason. Maybe they know Darius Taylor is not playing. Maybe Max Brosmer is her. I don't know. I have no idea. Those are both speculative remarks on, on my part, just to say that Vegas knows something. The question is what and are they right? Because they're you know a little wrong on that Florida State-Georgia Tech game. But this is going to be a really, really fun college football matchup, and I hope everybody enjoys it and understands what it means for both of these head coaches.